<sighs> Hi friends, Michael Supreme here coming at you guys with another reading. So for this reading, uh, I decided to do a little bit of an energy reading just to see where everyone's vibration and is, is at energetically. And I decided to look a little bit about what's next for you guys. So this is going to be like a kind of a twofold reading, um, more so about your vibration, where you at and like what you're attracting in with the vibration that you're in. Um, as you guys may notice, I don't have prepared piles, so I decided that I'm going to do some serious reading today for this uh, for this actual reading, and I'm just going to pull everything live. So, you know, you guys are going to be in for a treat for this reading, so hopefully the views reflect that. Watch this reading. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So for pick so for the pick a card selection, um, you guys are gonna be picking from what oracle deck you think best represents your energy and your vibration. So I have four decks here, and you guys are gonna uh are gonna pick which one uh fits you. So for pile one, we have the Woodland Ward uh Woodland the Woodland Wardens. Because I can talk. For pile two, we have the gateway of light. For pile three, we have the iris oracle. And for pile four, we have the moonbeam magic oracle. So pick whichever deck uh, you feel best encapsulates your energy, whichever one you're drawn to. And now that we have pile selection out the way, we will be getting into the reading. So if you chose the Woodland Wardens deck, this reading is for you. So let's open up the cards and let's see where your energy is first. And then we'll, we'll see about what's coming in for you. Uh, the way that I'm structuring this reading is that, yeah, we have the main Oracle deck, but I also picked an Oracle deck to be its companion. And we also have tarot cards. So this is going to be like a pretty in-depth and full reading. Um, I'm going to give this one some effort. So let's see what we got. I'm hearing grounded. Okay. First thing we have is the owl and the the owl and hawk. The trout and lily of the valley. And one more. Please don't fall. Talk to me about Paul Wine's energy. And we have the cat and lavender. Okay. So I recognize two out of three of these cards. So let me just read up on a cat and lavender real quick and see what I get from it. Okay. So, with the owl and the hop, the trout and the lily of the valley, and the cat and lavender. I get a feeling, pal one, like I said, I feel like your energy is actually pretty grounded right now. Um, the Isle and the Hop speaks of, of, even though it speaks of wisdom, it, could, it speaks of combining your intuition with practical knowledge. And even here with the Cat and Lavender, it speaks of actually trusting your, uh, your intuition and, spe and trusting your inner instincts and knowing that you can, that if there's something that you're facing, that you can do it alone, pal one. 
This is all about you asserting your independence, declaring yourself as healed, and really trusting in your decisions and who you are. And especially with the trout and the lily of the valley here coming in as purification, you definitely overcame like certain hurdles or certain challenges in your life. And now you're kind of just, I feel like patting yourself on the back. You've, you've been through something or maybe you've just been in like a real rough period in your life lately, but you've cleared that period in your life. And now that you've cleared that period, Pile One, you're more so just like kind of enjoying your newfound independence, your newfound confidence in yourself. And you're definitely, 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 I'm hearing just chilling. <laughs> like you're kind of just chilling right now. Especially since at the bottom deck, we have the beaver and the birch. Um, speaking of home. And when I see this beaver and the birch, I just think it's like you just found like a sense of sense of self. Like you're honestly very, very like, yeah. And here we even have the badger and ginkgo talking about healing wounds. Yeah, Pau Wan. You definitely uh, finished a, a little bit of a healing session or like you really just came to a breakthrough and like maybe your healing journey. And right now you're just kind of just enjoying the fruits of that labor and enjoying the the payoff from that work. So right now I'll categorize yourself as in a pretty good or a healthy vibration. You're in a pretty good and decent mindset and you're getting better and better each day as this energy kind of settles in. Learning to trust your instincts, learning to to do things on your own, or like being more confident in your ability to handle things on your own, <clears throat> and trusting in your own in your own inner knowledge. <clears throat> so let's get one more card, to like kind of characterize your vibration. Oh, emotional release. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of energy here around healing and purification in your energy pile. One, there's a lot of energy around that stuff. So with the fact that you have the emotional release card, this definitely does speak of you actually doing some healing. The anger card was going to follow it. So a lot of healing, a lot of purging of negative emotions and a lot more trust in who you are, what you bring to the table and what you can and can't achieve. And even a stronger trust in your intuition and in your decision making processes. So that's very, very clear to me, Paul One. So now that we got this out the way, let's let's get a card to represent what inner, what is coming your way. So what's next for Pile One? I'm hearing fulfillment, contentment. I think you're really going to carry this energy. We have the ill and iris with safety. Let me get one more. I think you're going to carry this energy. Oh, shucks. I said one more, please. I think you're going to carry this energy. And you're going to really just run with this newfound peace. Yeah. And the frog and the load. <laughs> and I said this newfound peace. And here we have the otter and the, uh, and the dog and the cat tail with peace. Yeah. You're definitely going to uh, take this newfound safety, this newfound energy that you have. And you're definitely going to make the most of it. Uh, let me see if I can do, do this. Well, let's make this a little bit better. Just hit it like this. Yeah, there we go. That way it's not so high up. And you can see a little bit more of the cards. I'm doing my low rent setup. I'm going to put a lot, a lot of energy into the reading, but not too much into the setup. So forgive me. You guys like seeing my face anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, a newfound peace and definitely a transition and a change, especially since metamorphosis came right out under purification. Independence came, right un came out under peace. Wisdom came out above safety. So, yeah, this is definitely really becoming more secure and more at home with yourself, with the person that you are. And... You really just underwent some a great healing in your life and in your energy. I don't know if it was like, you know, you finally come into terms with a very with a situation that kind of like burdened your emotions and you finally just releasing it. But Pile One, your energy is very clear and very pure. So let's get a little bit more. Oh, wait, wasn't this supposed to be what's next? 
Ooh, <laughs> I got confused. Yeah, this is supposed to be about like what's coming up next for you, right? I don't remember. I don't remember. Only thing I know is that this reading is flowing and I'm gonna allow it to flow. So if you know that I'm on there, what's next, then take that how it resonates. But I lost my place. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying. So let's get a little bit more uh, cards on. Uh, I guess what's next for you. We have death and letting go and honoring your energy. Either way, power one. Yeah, and your message is still coming out harmoniously, even though I lost my place. With the death card here, this speaks of the typical death card, new endings, bringing in new beginnings, things of that nature, a renewal in your energy. And we even have the letting go card here. Like I said, we had that badger and the ginkgo come out for you, which means that you were healing wounds. We have the purification and the metamorphosis card. You're definitely, your energy is definitely undergoing a great big change. Um, yeah, your energy is going a great big change. And it's because you're finally releasing something, letting go of something that's been burdening you. That's really just been holding you back. And honestly, it's about choosing yourself first with this honoring your energy card. It's about really giving yourself more credit, giving yourself, giving yourself more credit, really understanding that you are who you are and who you are is worthy. It's for you. You can fulfill yourself in and of yourself. And that, you know, if anyone doesn't really come in and add to your energy, you don't really need them. This is about getting rid of everything that no longer fits, everything that no longer like really fulfills you or increases your vibration, power one. Like I said, there's this energy of grounding and of peace, of finally rooting yourself in who you are, what it is that you're capable of, and a lot more trust in, in yourself and honoring your energy. So now I'm going to pull, I'm going to use the tarot cards to see about what's next for you. I don't know if these cards were, were, were supposed to tell me that, but I'll, I'll definitely make sure I remember that the tarot cards for that. <laughs> so let's see what we got for you, Pile One. All these cards are just dropping out my hand. This one fell out the way that it should. Five of Swords. Yeah, definitely a, a lot of conflict, upheaval, and changes. Especially if this is coming in for what's next. You're definitely getting a, a peace inside yourself. But, you know, there might be people that might uh, that might want to come along and try to disturb that peace that you have. You could have a very busy and active life. And you probably aren't able to find peace for too long in it. <laughs> but the, with the Five of Swords here, there's definitely uh, some energy here of this energy of this peaceful energy being shifted or shaken up a little bit. So let's see. Two of Swords in reverse. Hmm. A lot of mental, a lot of mental clutter that's happening here. The Two of Swords in reverse speaks of an inability to make a decision. That there might be something that's going to come in that's really going to start burdening you and bothering you. A challenge or a conflict or a sense of upheaval. And even though you came and you achieved this energy, you might really end up having a hard time like kind of just staying in this energy is what I'm seeing. Like even though you're so at peace, you're so you're so chill right now. Maybe these cards are what's supposed to be what's next for you. The eel, the frog, and the otter about safety, metamorphosis, and peace. Because right now you have a, a sense of independence. Your energy is grounded. But what's supposed, but what's next for you is actually being more safe in who you are, being more grounded in your wisdom and changing and allowing yourself to not be, to let your peace be disturbed, especially with the five of swords and the two of swords in reverse. There's something very mentally, a decision that needs to be made probably on someone or about someone or something that you're probably going to end up struggling with in the near future. The tower. Yeah. Very, very clear energy here. Five of swords, two of swords in reverse in the tower. You have something coming up, a very difficult decision that's going to be coming your way that you have to make, Pile One. And you're going to struggle with it. You're going to struggle with it. But in order to not struggle so much with this decision, Pile One, you need to really trust in yourself. Trusting your power, trusting your intuition, and trusting your capability. There's a sense of needing to have greater self-efficacy, um, greater self-efficacy, knowing that you can do things on your own. And even if things are getting tough, you'll find your way through it. 
because there is something on the horizon for you that's really going to challenge you. And it might come in the form of another person or you might have to make a decision to let someone else go. But just know with the tower energy here, pile one, is that if you don't make the choice, then the universe is going to make it for you. And I say this all the time. You don't want the universe to make choices for you because it's going to do it in the most forceful way to really shake you up and, and, and shake you loose. So if there's something that you know that you probably need to do, someone that you know you need to leave behind or someone that you know that you need to distance yourself from or to make a decision about, you need to hurry up and do that. Otherwise, things are going to blow up and, and go out of control. So let's get some clarification for the Five of Swords here. Can you clarify the Five of Swords for me for Power One, please? The Three of Cups, yeah. This has a lot to do with you and someone else. Four of Pentacles in reverse. And I don't shuffle reversals into my deck. So this Four of Pentacles in reverse is very, very clear here. The four of pentacles in reverse is telling me that maybe there's a uh, you need to actually speak your mind, not really keep things in and not really keep things hidden. It's time for you to speak your truths, pal one, to whoever, who, whatever friend this is or friend group or a person that's really been kind of like maybe disrespecting you or maybe just like kind of been getting on your nerves or kind of just been taking your energy for granted. You know how it is, Pawani. You know what the energy is about and you know what this is about. If you don't know what this is about, then you're going to find out in the, in the very near future because this is about what's next. So you're going to have to speak up or say something to a certain friend or a friend group about the conflict that they're, that they're bringing to you. And the Five of Swords is a card of conflict. This uh, intense arguments, not like the five of wands, which is a little bit of a disagreement. Like this is like intense arguments leading to a two of swords in reverse situation, which is like a real big struggle to make a decision or a choice, not really wanting to see something for what it is and really struggling with that energy. The two of swords upright is already pretty bad, but I mean, uh, pretty difficult energy, but with it in reverse is no good. So let's see what this two of swords in reverse is all about. In regards to what's next and what's coming for you, Pile One. This is, I really feel like it's about you having to defend your peace. The Four of Swords. Yes, and you even have the Star card and Temperance and the Moon at the bottom. And the High Priestess. What the hell? Yes. Yes, 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 Pile, <laughs> pile One. This is definitely about really trusting your intuition. Really getting down and understanding who, who you are. Even though this decision might be hard to make, take all the take the time that you need to really become cool, calm, and collected about making this choice. Don't let the fact that you know that you have to let let this person go, let this thing go, whatever it is that you have to let go. Don't let it cause too much uh, emotional upset for you. You need to release it because this is going to be probably a big change in your life. Maybe you're. Letting you're breaking up with a partner that you were with for a very long time. Maybe you're leaving a friend group behind or not being friends with someone who you were friends for a very long, long time because you're deciding to put yourself and put your energy first. But the fact of the matter is you need to make sure that you're very clear on it, that you think about it and that you become to a place of peace about this decision that, in fact, needs to be made. Because like I said, if you don't make the decision, the universe will. And you don't want that to happen. So trust your intuition and trust your gut before things get revealed to you in a very hurtful and painful way. And again, with the star card here, you have the temperance, the moon, and the high priestess. There's something deep inside of you. And again, I was talking about your intuition with the owl and the cat. There, trust your intuition and trust your gut feeling on this. You're not being steered wrong and you're not crazy for suspecting what it is that you suspect or feeling the way that you feel about this group of people or this person that you know that you have around you. You're not wrong about their energy. You're not wrong about what's happening there. So trust yourself more and really think about it, reflect upon it, and put mentally and emotionally prepare yourself to release this person, to release this situation. Whatever it is that you need to release, you need to mentally prepare for it. And this is what's coming up in your energy pile. And this is what's going to be next for you. So let's see. What's next for Power One? 
Oh, shucks. With the tower, we ended up with the four of cups and then the seven of cups at the bottom. Tower and the four of cups lets me know that if you if you sit on this, <laughs> this tower energy is really going, is going to rock your world. The four of cups is definitely of inaction. But what I really, really see here is like, What's really going to happen here is that there's going to be a period of you being in isolation, especially, especially since the fact that, you know, the independence card is here, the cat and a piece. This is going to be about you actually being alone, but really becoming more comfortable with being alone in your own energy and just being by yourself. Um, it's going to, I feel like this is like far future. This is something that's really going to like happen later. The tower is more pressing. But this four of cups energy for this four of cups energy is just letting me know that this is going to be something that's really going to leave you alone, especially since this person is holding on to their one cup, but leaving the three behind and you even have the three of cups here. This is definitely about you really just choosing yourself, taking your one cup and like keeping it close to you and separating it from these uh, from the other three. Whatever this conf whatever this group, this friend is that's causing you so much conflict and like really just like meddling with your energy, you're gonna have to cut it out. And if you don't cut it out, it's gonna be forcibly removed, pile one. So if this is a person, a lover, a friend that you're having a hard time cutting off or or listening to your intuition on, just know that the, the soon a decision will be taken out your hands and you're gonna end up something's gonna be revealed that's gonna rock your world. And you're going to end up spending a lot of time alone. And you might actually end up having to heal from it instead of taking the initiative, being empowered, and just causing this ending yourself. So let's get one more Oracle card about what's going to be next for you from this deck. And then I think we can uh, end your reading near Power One. This was a very clear reading. I'm shuffling, but this one card just will not move. Healing energy. Again, and we even had that badger in the ginkgo speaking of healing wounds. Your energy is going to be healed. And you, it needs to probably be healed in maybe isolation. Or maybe you just need to like really separate yourself a little bit more. I feel like with this healing energy, there's like an egg here. Like there's something inside inside of you that's going to be born. That's going to be like really transformed and reborn. Especially since we have the death card here. There's a new you that's coming to emerge, but you have to let go of the people, the paradigms, the old habits that you have, maybe an over-reliance on the people in your life, power one. Take it how it resonates, but this is going to be more pushing you towards being more independent, self-sufficient, and you're going to have to do things like alone. And it's going to be very healing for you, but also very challenging at the same time. But you're meant to come into an understanding of your energy who you are, what it is that you can achieve on your own, and really just heal any negative self-concepts or any misguided beliefs that you have about your self-efficacy, power one. If you don't know what that word means, you should Google it <laughs> and really get to come and understand what self-efficacy means for you, because that's the key word here, and that's what's really coming through in your life. So, Power One, this has been your, your energetic reading and for what's coming next and what you're attracting into your life. So, thank you so much for your time and energy. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like and like the video and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> if you guys want to support me as a content creator, the links are in the description box. Thank you so much for your time and energy, Power One, and be blessed. If you chose Pile 2, the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle deck, then this is for you. 
So let's see what we got. This is actually one of my new favorite Oracle decks. So I'm very interested to see what comes out here. So for pile one, the first thing we're gonna do is get a sense of your energy, what kind of energy you're in, what's your aura like. So this is more so gonna tell me about your vibration. So let's see what we got here for pile one, uh, pile two. First thing we have is star gathering. So let's get about three of these and then we can see what's happening here with your energy. But with the star gathering, this is this deck is actually very deep. So if you pick pile two, chances are that you're actually very high vibrational. Um, you're probably very drawn to the spiritual side of life and to very deep spiritual matters. So the fact that you have the star family and star gathering coming out, this is about you really coming into a closer alignment with your tribe. Yes, with your tribe and your soul family. This is about people coming in who's actually very, very much aligned with your energy, very much aligned with your path. People coming in with very similar interests as you, probably in the occult or spirituality or in the healing arts. This is definitely people that's going to like really support your energy pile too. And it's a beautiful thing to see. I'm going to start meeting your tribe and maybe even a, a soul mate. Yeah. Voice activation, angelic attunement, and divine support. The Seraphim's gateway. Like I said, if you pick this, to pick this pile, you're probably very high vibrational. You probably do your spiritual work. <laughs> you probably... Uh, aren't afraid to face yourself, or even if you are afraid, you muster up the courage and do it anyway. The Seraphim's Gateway is all about, like uh, it says here, voice activation and angelic entombment. This is all about speaking your truth, speaking from a place of authenticity and a place that's really deep from your spirit and from your angelic guides. You're also receiving heavy, heavily divine support and guidance in your life right now especially if you're being guided to a soul tribe and star family members. That definitely speaks of, you know, the, the higher the higher powers of, I guess, source, universe, father, as I call them, of you being really heavily supported right now in that, in that, re in that regard. And we even have the Akashic Records here. Clearing, clearing old stories, releasing past lives and freedom. This is definitely a lot about you actually clearing away this falsehood, this thin veil of illusion that's over everyone's lives. This is a very deep reading pile too, and I expect no less from the Gateway of Light deck, and especially if you are drawn to this. Um, if this is sounding a little too woo-woo, a little too out there for you, maybe this isn't your pile, but this is a very clear and very specific energy, especially with the Seraphim's Gateway coming out. This is very high vibrational energy. People who do their spiritual work and people who are very much involved in the matters of spirituality and the occult. Um, you're definitely clearing away a lot of old, uh, not old karma, but it's more so outdated beliefs and habits that you had about yourself. Releasing that karma from past lives, I'm, I'm thinking. Not this life karma, but past life karma. There's definitely a sense of becoming into greater, into greater like, I keep feeling the word authenticity. And the fact that you're bringing in this authenticity, you're speaking from a more pure place, you're speaking up about the things that really interest you, about what you're really aligned with, that energy is really bringing in your soul family, your star family, and probably even a soulmate or a twin flame energy. I feel it. There's something here very deep about this. So I'm going to read the Akashic Record cards for you guys. The Akashic Record card, at least. It says, and I'm going to just read the, the, uh, the card message. When you draw this card, the universe is releasing you from past experiences. These can be soul-based memories, fears from past lifetimes, 
or older aspects of this current lifetime that you moved on from. Know that this is that it is that it is time to reclaim your freedom and rewrite your story. You can do this by following through on your dreams. Gone are the days of fear-based indecision. This is time for you to rise up and claim your truth. If you're sitting on a dream or feeling called to move in a particular direction, it's because you have unearthed an important soul, soul lesson, and it's essential for you to follow that call to clear unwanted energies of your past. As you do so, don't allow yourself to be pulled into expecting the worst possible outcome. Know that this expectation is not your truth, but old energy being released from your energy body. Call in angels to shine their light on any repressed fears, energies, or stories that are no longer serving you. It's time to fly high in freedom. And that call in the angels part is like very is very key here because you do have the seraphim's gateway, which is angelic attunement and divine support. You have heavy divine guidance and heavy divine support, power one and power two. And this is all about really living a more truthful life. I keep feel, I keep hearing authenticity and I just pulled another card and then we have angelic frequencies. The angels are here, you are safe and you have a very potent connection, especially since you have the seraphims and the angels coming out and seraphims are a higher form of angels. Pow two, you have a very high vibration. And like I said, it's because you do the work. You take the time to foster your spiritual connection. And what's really happening here in your energy right now, at least, is that your angels, your angels and your spirit guides are very much around you and they're pushing you in the direction that you need to go. That's going to lead you to your tribe, to your soul family, to a twin flame. Um, and in order to be able to do that, you need to move in authenticity. You need to have more faith and belief in yourself, belief in your dreams and belief in your power and your paths. There's a release that needs to happen of outdated beliefs and happen and, and things of that energy. I mean, things of that nature. And since this is actually in your current energy, I think that this is something that you're probably already working on or already have worked through, pile two. That you've already cleared these old stories, that your spirit guides are around you heavily, and now you're attracting in your soul, your star family, your soulmate, a twin flame, soul tribe, all those good things. But you are definitely heavily protected by angels, high vibrational angels at that. And you're being you're being watched over. So let's get another card that really talks to me about your energy. The way that I set this reading up is that I have the main oracle, but I also have a companion oracle for each of the decks that I that, uh, that were chosen. So let's get a card from your companion oracle and see what comes out. Talk to me about Pal 2's energy. This card is just like really in my hand. You are the joy seeker. What little victories can you celebrate? Yeah, this is about really, especially since it's also a number four. Fours are all about having divine, divine protection, divine support, and whatever it is that you're building or creating in your life. This is about you having a really strong structure and foundation in your life right now. And this foundation is something that's coming from your inner temple and from within. Even if your outer life might not seem like as stable and secure, at the very least, your spirit is unmovable and unshakable. And from having an unmovable and unshakable spirit, you're going to start attracting and bringing in all the things that you need. Your spirit, like I said, the angels are around you very heavily piled, piled to, really heavy. So really remember that. And you're going to start bringing in people who are aligned with your energy and who are going to help you. So get into the energy of gratitude and just enjoy all the little things that you have right now. If you definitely feel like you don't have like, you know, you're not as financially or physically stable as you was like as you would like. Just celebrate the little things that you do have. And with that little energy of gratitude, you'll start bringing in so much more. Keep that in mind, pal, too. <laughs> the how was in the nail. What has your intuition been trying to tell you? I'm going to read this card for you guys. Ah. And then one more card is trust your faith. Dive into the unfolding journey. What is your faith asking of you? What has your intuition been trying to tell you? This again with the Akashic Records. You're being guided right now in your energy currently 
you're being guided to do something, to go somewhere, or to like think about something in a certain way, pile two. This is like real strong energy of you receiving such powerful guidance from your spirit guides currently. But I'm gonna read uh, the number 30, the how is in the now. What has your intuition been trying to tell you? The number one question that keeps us in a holding pattern is how. How do I get to where I wanna be? How do I know what path to take? How will it unfold? We want to know how things will work out before we take the leap. We overthink and worry about the unknown, which keeps us stuck. You've pulled this card because you've been stuck in the need to know trap, wanting to know how and when something will happen, which is obscuring the clarity you seek. The how is in the now, meaning each step you take will reveal more of the path to you. When you take a step forward, the universe can support you. The universe does not respond to questions, but rather to action. What guided action can you take right now? Instead of asking how, change your focus and ask, what can I do right now? Then listen intently for the direction. You may get an inkling through an inner knowing. Whether you refer to it as a gut reaction, instinct, foresight, or certain knowingness, everyone has the gift of intuition. You are being called to pay close attention to the messages you've been receiving and learn how to work with this inner awareness. You'll know when you are being guided because you'll feel a presence of love and comfort. You will know what path is best for you by the way it feels energetically. Does it feel expansive, light, and joyful? Trust that. Just like radio, wave, radio waves, loving guidance and new information from your higher self is constantly being broadcasted to you. It's just a matter of learning how to tune into it. Intuition is your inner compass. Trust yourself and you will be free. By trusting and honoring your intuition, you will step into more clarity, confidence, and joy. And this is exactly what your Akashic Record cards are telling you about, that it's time for you to write your own story. If there's something that your intuition has been guiding you to do or guiding you or giving you direction on how you should probably be feeling or kind of just letting you know about what's next on your path, you're not meant to question how. But question like what it is that you can do to like really support that energy, what it is that you can do now. And honestly, what I'm really feeling here, and we'll get into the tarot and see about what's next and get more guidance into this energy. Actually, I can I can pull maybe a card on it. But honestly, Pile 2 is all about trusting your intuition. So let's get another, let's get a card to really clarify this. What has Pile 2's intuition been trying to tell them? Can you tell me a little bit about this? You got the lovers. Again, this is, feel, to me, I feel, it's feeling like peace and harmony. But again, it could be that twin flame soulmate connection. Maybe you there is someone that's like really coming in for you. Maybe there's someone coming in for you and you doubt that message here. <laughs> You're not as confident in like, you know, that someone's actually coming in to love you that, <laughs> you know, that you're attracting a twin mate or a, a, a soul mate or a twin flame or a twin mate. I like that. That you're attracting a twin. Uh, get your words together, Keenan. That you're attracting a twin mate. <laughs> like maybe you're not as confident in that. But the fact of the matter is your intuition has been telling you this and you need to understand that. The another message between a lovers and a six of wands in reverse is that your intuition has been trying to tell you that you need to just enjoy your life. Enjoy what it is. Enjoy what's happening right now. Just enjoy the journey and enjoy the path. There could be a lot of like distrust or lack of confidence in your path right now. Or maybe of just like what's happening next because things probably just been kind of still. And there could be a, a lack of a lack of trust in that. But no, that's the opposite energy that you need to be in. Bring yourself into alignment and bring yourself into a peace that everything is going well. Don't be hard-headed. Let's get one more about what it is that your intuition is, is uh, trying to tell you. So what is Pile 2's intuition trying to tell them? The Three of Wands, Four of Wands. I keep feeling a connection. There's the there's the lovers card here and a bunch of wands. 
I think your intuition is trying to tell you that there's something very beautiful coming in for you and that you're keeping yourself from seeing it. A lot of cards about a lack of confidence in something. You're not trusting your messages on something, pal, too, and your energy. And I really think it has a lot to do with a lover or twin flame or soulmate. The three of wands speaks of, of things coming in for you, of I really feel like of everything just kind of like working out. And then you even have the four of wands, which is all about union, celebration and achievement. There's something here about your life being so, so much more stable, so much more put together than what you're trying to believe or what you're trying to see right now. You have six, six and you even have four, four. Like there's something here about you, like really having to have more faith, more confident and more trust again, because even then we have trust your faith and dive into the unfolding journey. Just in the three of wands is a card of journey. Just enjoy what the hell is happening in your life, pal, too. I, I feel that very strongly. Just in, just enjoy it. Like no need to keep trying to ask, go to spirit and ask what's happening. What I got to do? What, 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 how, how, how? Calm, calm the hell down, pal, too. Calm down. It just allow yourself to be at peace in your journey and allow things to unfold. Let the universe surprise you and like really flex flex a little bit for you. Show his, show let Father show his power in your life <laughs> and and bring bring you the things that you need to need to uh, see and the things that you're that you're uh, that you've been intuitively told or that you probably know. There is no action that needs to be taken in this in this in this reading about what your intuition is trying to tell you. The only action that's being taken is to just allow yourself to be peace, to be at peace and to be loved on, which is very beautiful. I really feel like you're a pal that's been doing a lot of the spiritual work. And now the only thing you got to do is just start reaping the, the fruits of your labor. You're probably so used to having to do spiritual work that the fact that you don't have anything to do, you might feel like something's wrong or that you're not, that you're blocked from your intuition. Like, no. Enjoy the enjoy the stillness, enjoy the quiet, and just enjoy your journey for now because you've done the work. And usually when the hero slays the dragon, kills the bad guy, he enjoys a period of peace in his life. And that's where you're at, a period of peace. So allow yourself to be at peace and allow the good things and the blessings to roll in, Pile 2. So let's see what's next for you. What's next for Pile 2? Okay. We have the inner earth, base chakra, strength and security, and light and laying foundations. Your new life is being set for you. Like your, your new vibration, your new energy, your new energy is being grounded and is being set inside of you. I remember talking about this when I uh, did my real talk about my spiritual journey. That now that I'm at peace, I'm just I'm just letting the energy disseminate and set in to really lock in this vibration in my energy. And you might really be doing the same thing, pal, too. Really allowing allowing this energy of peace to really disseminate and to lock in. You've done the work and now you have to get to know the new you and allow the new you to settle into place before things start happening again. Especially if you've been real diligent in your shadow work. If you've been listening to your guides and not being combative with them. Let me see, what's next? This dollar gateway activation. This came out in uh, my Sacred Sunday reading. This is all, of, and I wish I remember what the hell it was about. Infinite potential of manifestation. This is, let me just uh, go to see what the, what the card means. And we even have the heart of source here. The heart of source is all encompassing love, unconditional acceptance and serenity. Again, like I said, enjoy the peace that's in your life. Enjoy the love of the universe that it's going to shower you with. You're definitely in a very good place in a very secure position in your life right now, Pile 3. And look, I turn right to the heart of source card. So I'm going to see what the card means. You're connecting direct, directly with the heart of source, the creator of life and love. You are blessed to receive this card for it shows the cup of your heart is being filled with love until it overflows. The divine energy that is with you now is helping you melt away blockages so that you can be open to the love, acceptance, and appreciation that you deserve. What have I been telling you, Pile 2? 
You are being encouraged to view yourself in a loving way and give yourself permission to be loved. If you've been holding back for a while but are now ready to share the love you have within, this card lets you know it is safe to do so. You are love, loving, and lovable. Step forward. Claim your worth and enjoy a new level of spiritual openness. You are truly blessed. Again, pile two, you reach a state where your vibration is very high. This is the state that a lot of people aspire to be in. You've been doing the work, especially if you've been diligent. Like I said, if you're not high, if you haven't been doing the spiritual work, and be real with yourself, if you haven't been doing the spiritual work, this is not your pile. Like You need to make sure that you really are real with yourself for this message. Because otherwise, you'll be setting yourself up for failure if you're not being honest with yourself in regards to this reading. But yes, this is a very high vibration pile too. And what you really need to realize is that the universe is loving on you. You've done so much work. You've cleared so much energy. Now it's time for you to walk and walk and just make your dreams happen because you're going to be so supported. It's going to be like magic. So now I'm going to read the Stellar Gateway uh, Activation. I, oh, wait, no. I'm on Inner Earth. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to uh, just read the cards that I'm being guided to. I'm trying to find a stellar gateway, but after I got off the heart of source and I just opened up the book again, I ended up on inner earth. So I'm going to read it as well. You're becoming fully aware of what you need in order to feel safe and fulfilled on planet earth. Note that it's part of the divine plan for you to be incarnated upon this planet now. And although at times you may, may have felt unstable or that you have lost your way, you have been building up to moment, building up momentum to be where you are today. You are in a space where you can build powerful foundations, a space where you can lay out exactly what you need, who you need to be, and what you need to do to flourish and grow. You have the opportunity to reclaim parts of yourself you bury deep within and reclaim gifts you've abandoned. If you are starting any projects or thinking about taking up something you've had on hold, now is the perfect time. The seeds you are planting are sending roots deep into Mother Earth. You are held. You are supported. And again, divine support. Come on, Pile 2. This is very beautiful. The universe is loving on you. And now let me just see what the Stellar Gateway is about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are a master of manifestation. Every one of your thoughts, actions, non-actions, and choices is affecting the unfolding of your path. Realize that you have great potential and power within you. And through your focused awareness, you can draw on heavenly support to create the life of your wildest dreams. And this is what's next for you. Know that all energies you connect with are carried up to your stellar gateway. And if they are aligned with the attentions your soul had before this incarnation, opportunities will come your way. It is important to consider connecting with your cosmic origins at this time and also tracking down the intentions of your soul. So if you want some work to do, there it is. <laughs> well, if you could bring your wishes in this life together with your pre-life intentions, you can live a life that is aligned with the highest heavens. Again, this is a very high vibrational reading, Paul Two. Let's get one more card about what's next. This is all about really realizing that you're in the perfect position to build the life that you've always dreamed of, pile two. And right now, the only thing you have to do is just allow yourself to be at peace and really understand that. Take, uh, take your life step by step. If there's something that you've been putting on hold, then get started again. And it's the same thing with me and my channel. I took in a big break from my channel and just been uploading very lightly. But now I feel more determined to really just to do readings like this, where like I'm really just giving it a lot of <laughs> a lot more effort than what I've been giving it lately. And here we have the Order of Melchizedek. And again, this came out my Sacred Sunday reading as well. I didn't pull it, but it was there. The Order of Melchizedek is embraced by light, mission uncovered, and don't give up. Again, this is what's next for you is walking on your your highest on your highest good, your highest path. Walking down the, the path of your life that's going to allow your dreams to come true and to let you know that you are heavily divinely supported 
by Father, Universe, Spirit, whatever you know, whatever you know it as. This is very strong energy, Pile, pile Two. You're in a very high vibration, and your life is just really where every is everything where it needs to be, and you just need to understand that right now in your life. Your energy, your vibration is becoming more solid, it's becoming more set, it's becoming your normal. And that from this from this vibration, you can start building the life of your dreams. Things are going to start being attracted to you. Instead of you having to work extra hard for things, things are just going to come your way. So know that it's going to be very beautiful. And again, I still feel this energy of a twin flame or a soulmate coming your way. And, and not just soulmate, a soulmate, but soulmates. Like friends coming in to support you and things of that nature. Things are gonna are gonna start looking up for you. Yeah, and again, what's next for you? <laughs> again, I started talking about soulmates and tribe, and here it is. Beautiful cards. All right. You have come together. We need each other. Where have you been separating yourself or pushing against others in the world? This is time for you to come together in harmony. And now this is the 44 card. So we have 44, 4, and the 4 of Wands. So 444 four, four is a very important number for you. You are heavily protected and guided and supported in whatever it is you're trying to build in your life, pile too. You need to make sure that you understand that. The tribe can't show up until you do. How can you show more of the real you? And that comes with the Seraphic Gateway, the Seraphim's Gateway about making sure that you're more authentic, that you're speaking your truth and that you're letting your light shine out into the world, pal, too. Don't, now is not the time to really hide yourself anymore. Be proud of who you are. Share your interests. Talk about your hobbies. Talk about your spiritual path to the people that will listen. And even to the people who don't listen, don't be afraid to, to say who you are and what it is that you do. Because if they balk and they run away, then that's called divine protection pushing away the people who are not aligned with your frequency and your height. But you're going to start realizing and if you the more you vocalize this, the more you're going to realize that you're that you're going to start meeting more and more people that have things in common that you can like kind of walk this path together with or at least like talk about it and really enjoy more conversations of that matter. And then finally, out of the woods you made it through. What newness is emerging? Again, you've done the work, Paul too. You've done the work. You're out of like this very dark period of your life and now you're walking in you're walking into the light. You're being embraced by the light. So know that you that what's next for you, Pile Three, is the life of your dreams. And you need to honestly have faith and believe in this message, Pile Two, because if you keep doubting it, if this is something that you've been hearing a lot and you and you're doubting it. You're you're doing it wrong. You might need to go back a couple steps and, and do some more work because you've done everything you need to do and everything is unfolding for you. So let's see what the tarot has to say about what's next. And then we'll end your reading, pile too. Again, like I said, I'm going to give this reading a real effort. So it's going to be pretty long. This is going to feel like a personal, uh, as much effort as I give my personal readings. The Two of Pentacles speaks of balance and also it speaks of an increase in finances as well. The two of pentacles is like having more than one stream of income when, when it comes to finances, but there's also a divine balance being brought into your life. More security, financial and physical security being brought into your life. Believe it, pal too. The hermit. Again, with the Hermit and then the Ace of Swords at the bottom, this is about inner clarity. This is about you really realizing, walking, and standing in your truths, in your truth. You've been a seeker of the light. You've been someone, like I said, who done their inner work. And now you're clear. Every, you are very clear on who you are, what it is that you stand for. And for some of you guys, you're very clear on your purpose and what it is that you came to do. If you're not clear on that, then that's the that's some work that you can do. Do some some soul some soul regression. I think it's called past life regression to find out what how what your past lives look like and what it is that you need to do in this lifetime. If you don't know anyone that do that, I offer those readings. You can book with me in a private reading, and we can get we can get that set up. 
But yes, this is about really introspecting and finding out and really realizing that you're clear on the inside. You've done the work. You're very secure and stable with the Ten of Pentacles right under the, the Ace of Swords. It's time for things to be increased in your life. The Knight of Swords. So really go along your path with focus and determination. Really realize that whatever it is that you want to manifest and bring into your path, you can. Only thing you got to do is just focus your intention and align your intentions on it. Exactly what the Stellar Gateway says, you are a master manifester. So align your energies and put, in, and put it to use. Whatever it is that you want to attract on your path, just know that you can have it. Just have faith that it's going to show up in a timing that it's needing to show up. Temperance here is letting me know again that a divine balance has been brought into your life. This is what's next. That divine balance has been brought into your life. And again, that you're receiving divine support and intervention. The angels are with you, Pile 2, and you have a very potent connection to the divine source, to Father, and to the angelic realms. So really make sure that you really lean on them for support and trust in the messages that you're getting. And again, with the Eight of Wands here, I'm going to take this for the final card. And with the Eight of Wands, good news and good things are coming your way. Uh, like I said, it's going to be almost as if by magic. Things are going to start moving in for you. Things are going to start moving quickly, especially with the Knight of Swords as well. Things are going to start moving quickly for you, but all of it is going to happen in a timing that is meant to happen. So right now, if your life is feeling a little bit more still, Enjoy that stillness because life is going to come at you fast <laughs> in a little bit. So take the time out to enjoy your rest period, to enjoy the soulmates and the soul members that's going to be coming in into your life slowly but surely. And just really come to understand that you are heavily protected, divinely guided, and loved by Father, by the Source, by God, whatever it is that you know him as. So Pile 2, if this reading resonated, please leave a like or a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, if you guys want to support me as a content creator, the links to do so are in the description box. You can book a reading, donate a deck, or even just donate money if that's your twist. Any way that you choose to support me is A-OK -okay with me. Thank you and be blessed. Hey now, hey now. These are what dreams are made of. If you've chosen Pile 3, the Iris Oracle, then this reading is for you. So Pile 3, let's get into your energy of your vibration. And let's see where you at vibrationally, Pile 3. Let's do that Bob check. See what you is, who you are, what you got. <laughs> hmm. I already feel really goofy and really light with your energy, Pile 3. I think that you guys are very lighthearted and, and, and very fun-loving people right now. And even if you don't feel that way right now, I feel like that's what your spirit is. Spirit is, is what your spirit is on in, at, at its base. Let's see what we got for Pile 3s. Let's see what vibration. What's Pile 3s aura like? We got body. Let's get more cards. Body represents your physical body. Maybe you need, maybe you've been working out more. Maybe you've been eating better. Maybe you've just been trying to take better care of yourself with the body card. And that's what your spirit guides are trying to tell you. Volcano. Okay. Volcano. There's something being pent up inside of you. There needs to be a release from your body. It sounds very sexual. Pile three. <laughs> Let's see what else you got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been in a singing mood all day today. Mm -hmm. 
something that is never truly yours and at the bottom can't be caught. Yeah, your reading is very odd in between worlds. Your reading is very odd, pile three. And it's very disconjointed, but I really feel like there's something that needs to be released from you. You've been, I'm gonna read the volcano. It's been building for a while now and you are ready to burst out with a bang. They better watch out for you, sweetheart, because you are about to bring the fire. If they aren't on your page, they just better start running because it's time for your takeover. Before you let out all that passionate, moving, fiery force, you might feel a bit stressed or cranky. It's because the pressure is building, and guess what? Your stress and those uncomfortable feelings are just part of this process. It's hard to be patient when you have fire in your belly, and but you'll be letting it loose real soon. So yeah, this could be definitely a, a lot about a lot of stress, a lot of like things really building up inside your energy and inside your body. And it could have to do with a very strong drive to make money with something that is never truly yours. This could be something that's very money motivated or very finance motiv motivated. Maybe you've been feeling uh, there's been a growing urge for you to just like to leave a job and to strike out on your own or something or to take control over something. I don't know. I'll pull. I'll see what we get in the companion deck, uh, your companion oracle. But pile three, there's something here that that's being built up. A lot of tension, a lot of stress that just needs to be, that's going to be released, and it's going to be released in a very big and dramatic fashion with the volcano card here, and it really might have something to do with money. So let's see. What is pile three's aura like? What is their vibration? Talk to me. Let's see, let's try to go through this very methodically. That's probably, I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of cards that keep wanting to come out. I just need one. Okay. I said I need one. These cards are sticking very hard. Your energy is just very tense, pal. Three, like, like I said, I feel like you guys are very fun, loving, and kind people on a at base. But like I said, that might not have been the energy that you've been in lately. This energy is very dense and very tense. It's really affecting my my pull and my shuffle. Nothing is coming out the way that I want it to. Maybe you've been having building frustration with, with your life. Maybe things haven't been working out the way that you wanted to. And you've been feeling this stress in your body. Maybe your shoulders have been really tense. You could have been having back pains, maybe headaches, migraines. Whatever it is, this tension is really affecting your body, is affecting your energy. And it could have a lot to do with money on money troubles, money problems, or the desire to want to make more. But we have the mystic healer. Healing energy flows through you. I think this is speaking a lot about how your, your energy kind of needs healing right now, how you need healing. We have grace and gratitude. Through gratitude, joy expands. And cleansing waters. Purification activates vibrant life force. Yeah, pile three. This is about the need to really cool and settle down. This volcano card is very tense energy. It's not working in the way that it needs to work. I really think that this is a lot of undue stress. And it, and it honestly doesn't suit you. It's probably really affecting your body. Let's read the Mystic Healer card. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Here it is. Inner and outer healing on all levels is occurring in your life. A situation, relationship, or physical challenge is being resolved. Have faith that it's happening. This is the time to find a source of challenges. Transform inner grievances. Do it now. You no longer need to carry it with you. You are a healing force for others even if you aren't aware of it. The sacred traveler wants you to know there are times when the traveler steps off the path to search for the mystic healer. The healer instructs that everything, 
Everything in nature has the intrinsic ability to restore itself and remind you that you also have this powerful ability within you. For healing to occur on the outside, it's essential for healing to occur on the inner planes. To do this, meditate by visualizing a beautiful, vital future for yourself and trust that recovery is on the way. Past life issues may be emerging in order to be released. Mystic healers are working with you to resolve emotional and physical challenges. Be patient and have faith that beneath the surface all is well. Like I said, now I get it. Now it's starting to make sense. This is about you having to really ease up a little bit on your life right now, Pile, pile 3. This stress, this anxiety, this hunger, this thing that's been building inside of you is affecting your bodily health. You could, in fact, be making your own self sick, <laughs> worrying yourself sick, <laughs> Pile 3. And honestly, what you need to do is just allow yourself to be cleansed, to relax, to have grace and well, to have gratitude for the things that you already have. If there's something that if you're really pushing and trying to fight to get more and more in your life, you're only going to end up making yourself more tense, more angry, more stressed, because things are going to happen when they're meant to happen for you, pile three. And not when you want them to. And you need to really come into the understanding that spirit, God, the universe, and force does not bend to your will. That's a very common misconception that a lot of people tend to have about the spiritual path. You work with your spiritual guides. When you manifest, you work with their with intentions. And if your intentions aren't really aligned for what's good for you, your spells are going to fizzle. They're going to backfire. Your manifestations isn't going to come in. Or they're not going to come in when you want them to. They're going to be delayed and off-put because your energy isn't right. Because you're not speaking to the spirits with the proper respect that you need to. You need to really take a, uh, to do what you can to really relax. Practice gratitude for what you have. And maybe like chill and maybe heal. I'm hearing like maybe if you can go to a hot spring, maybe a sauna, a sauna or get like a massage. You might really need to, to, to get some rest and to like really do something with your body, to heal your body. And again, open your heart to joy. You, there's so much stress, so much anger, so much hunger built inside your energy and built inside yourself. But it's time for you to like really take a break, to chill out, and to allow yourself to be healed. You need to go get some healing to find a healer or to just... In order, if you if you having a hard time allowing gratitude in and like staying in that energy, then you might just need to go and get a healer, get some Reiki done, or like I said, go get a massage or go sit in a sauna and do something to really relax your body because you're causing yourself more harm than good here. So let's get some cards to see what it is that's truly causing you this much stress. And again, I feel like it has something to do with money. I, I feel very, very clearly that it might have something to do with money or financial troubles, which is very common right now because, you know, the United States is like going to hell in a handbasket. And here it is. Queen of Pentacles in reverse. This is about your stability and your security and the, and the, and the lack of it. <laughs> you're not you're, you're not happy with your home life right now. Things aren't the way things aren't going the way that it needs to go. You're not, you don't feel very secure and stable, which is why you need to have gratitude for the things that are going right. I know it's very oxymoronic and very hard, but if I've been through this energy and if I can make it through, you can too, pile three, okay? You need to learn to have joy and gratitude for the little things that you have right now. And again, with the four swords underneath, you need to take a chill pill. You need to rest. You need to reflect. And you need to really go inside yourself and, and find your inner source, like the mystic healer says. It's time for you to really get out of this physical world and connect to it and connect to yourself. The Hierophant upright. With the Hierophant here, yeah, you need to connect to your higher self. Connect to a higher source, a higher power. And you need to really allow that wisdom to come in. Um, you need to find yourself a nice little spiritual teacher, a guru. Hi, how are you? It's Amaga Supreme. You need to really heed the advice that you're getting, Pile 3. Um, honestly, truly, because you're causing yourself more harm than good with all this worrying and all this stressing that you're doing. All this energy that's building up. And 
that you're going to release is really deeply affecting your body. You need to get a massage, go to a sauna, or get some energy healing done on you right now. Right now, pile three. <laughs> because you're not you when you're angry. <laughs> Let's see what we got. The Ace of Swords. Clarity coming in. Yes. This is the truth. What I'm saying, every time I see the, the Ace of Swords, I'm always hearing like this is for true. What I'm telling you is the truth, Pile 3. If you're really worried about your, your finances and things of that nature, it's very human. That's understandable. But your spirit guides are kind of telling you that you need to just kind of relax and trust that they got everything under control. That things are going to happen in a time that it's meant to happen. That even though like we are like really going through a tough time, if you need to downsize and cut back instead of complaining and ruminating on it, downsize and cut back and just be grateful for the chance and the opportunity to maintain the things that to maintain your essentials this is i don't know why i got that message but it is that's definitely something that came through you need to really change your perspective in the way that you're seeing your life and in order for that to happen you need to really get into the energy of wisdom listen to someone that that's a little bit more spiritually involved than you pile three or listen to your own inner guidance if you consider yourself quite accomplished in the spirit. Then listen to your own guidance and listen to what it, what messages are coming through for you. And have more faith in that. And again, this is all about gratitude and allowing gratitude to bring more joy into your life. So let's see what's next for you, Pile 3. What's next for Pile 3? Oh, I need one card. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Under a spell. Under a spell speaks of like really being really enamored with someone or something. Under a spell, it can be either real negative or real positive. It depends on the energy of the reading. Right now, it could be real negative. Maybe you're under the spell of money. Maybe you're just like really stuck in a trance, stuck in a, like a, a, a go hard or go home mindset, or I need to do this. I need to achieve. I need to get. I need to gain. It could have you in a chokehold right now in pile three. And this is what the uh, this card is trying to tell you right here, right now. Yeah, the gallery of those who came before it. Comparison. This is what's really coming, what's really coming out for you, Pile 3. I, I'm asking about what's next, but I really feel like your spirit guides are really trying to tell you that nothing is next until you handle this issue. Like this is a very pressing matter. You're under you're under the control, under the, the allure of money, under the allure and under the guise of comparison, and under the allure of really physical and financial uh, achievement and security. You're stuck in a survival mindset, pile three. And it's because you're really comparing your life to either what you used to have and how things are kind of like kind of dwindling now, or you're comparing your life to maybe your more successful friends, family members, and things of that nature. But I'm going to say it before and I'm going to say it again, pile three. Comparison is the thief of joy. If you allow yourself to really keep comparing your life and comparing yourself to other people, you're never really going to find happiness. You need to really embrace your life for how it is, no matter what's happening in it. Whether you're losing more and you have to cut back and like really, you know, tighten up your belt. Or if you're just feeling like you don't have enough, like you you need more so you can live a better, live a lifestyle that you want to live. Either way, pile three. You need to stop trying to be in a rat race and comparing yourself to other people and their energies and their success and what's going on in their life and be more at peace with your path, no matter what it looks like. And here it is, spirits to guide you. Again, connect to your spiritual guidance. Your spirit guides are here and they're coming through very strongly telling you that enough is enough in this situation. You're doing yourself more harm than good, pile three. And like I said, I don't even feel like this is a what's next. I'll pull the what's next in the tarot, but this Oracle deck is really con continuing on with this narrative. I feel like this is a very pressing matter for you guys, and they could be quite concerned about you in regards to this matter. So let's get some more what's next from this, from this deck, from the tarot. And then we can try your companion Oracle and see if, if, the, if the energy will shift there. 
So what's next for pile three? Because the Iris Oracle is just really hammering in the point. Yeah, the Fool card. This is about really living your life in trust and faith. To me, the Fool card is the ultimate card of, 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 of blind trust and blind faith in the universe. You need to have more faith in your spiritual guides and your spiritual guidance. If you're not a very deeply spiritual person, if you're just someone who consumes tarot card readings because you think they're cute or entertaining, there's something here for you that you need to really make sure that you have a little bit more faith and trust in your life. If you're coming to this reading expecting to hear just all good things, then you're going to be sorely mistaken, Pile 3, because if you're really that worried about your finances and your security, that you're running to tarot card readings to hear that everything is going to be okay, you're not using them correctly. And if that's not your energy and that's not the person that you are, then this is telling you to really be a little bit more in trusting of your spiritual guides, that you need to really make sure that you believe the messages that you hear, that things are going to change and get better, that you that you have this fire inside of you. And that fire is going to really guide you through and see you through and through this life. But the fact of the matter is that fire energy could be building up in a very negative way and affecting you in a physical matter, in a physical way. So that's, ooh, this one just jumped out. The Eight of Swords in Reverse. The Eight of Swords in Reverse really speaks of like either coming out of limit. Yeah, okay. It's coming out of a, lim a limiting mindset. Like with the Fool and the Eight of Swords in Reverse, what's next for you is actually a change of mind. Really allowing yourself to dive into your to your spiritual guidance, to your faith, and to re to quit your resistance. That's what's really going to come up next for you is for you to quit your resistance and allow your spirit guides to guide you. A shift in your mindset. Even if you might really feel really restricted, yeah, even if you might be feeling overwhelmed and, and really restricted, it's still about you moving forward even though you're blindfolded. Again, because in both of these, this person is blindfolded. This is about you really not knowing what's going to lie ahead, but facing the unknown with courage, pile three. And that's exactly what's need, what's going to have what's coming up for you. Really realizing that all this worrying, all this stressing, isn't getting you anywhere, and you need to relax, to have some fun, to enjoy what you can enjoy, and then things are going to move in divine timing for you. But you need to have a lot more faith in that. It's this one, the King of Wands. The King of Wands is someone that's very secure, very confident. Yeah, you're going to you're going to come. You're going to be covering. You're going to be fine, pal, uh, pal three. But you're only going to be fine once you become very clear that things you're not going to have all the answers. You don't know how life is going to turn out. You don't know what's going to happen for you. But you need to really welcome the adventure of life. Welcome in the fun, the excitement, even though like financial being on the verge of financial ruin isn't really fun and exciting. But you really still need to like face that with courage, with positivity and optimism and really realize that you are going to be able to overcome whatever it is that you're going through. But you don't have to go as hard as you've been going. It's actually doing more harm than good for your body, power three and for who you are. You've been really taxing yourself. And you really need to relax, to get out of this survival mindset and allow yourself to just go down your path and your journey with faith that you're going to be provided for. So let's get some Oracle, an Oracle card or two about what's next for you from your companion Oracle. Hmm. Journey by Moonlight. Believe in magic. And again, with the journey by moonlight, this is about not having all the, not being able to see clearly. You can't see clearly in the dark. You're blindfolded. But the fact of the matter is you need to trust the, the spirits and the beings that are around you, Pile 3. Believe in magic. Like I said, if you're not really a very spiritual person, you need to really, even if you're not very spiritual, you need to at least know this as a fact that you're being, that you're going to be protected that you're going to be able to go down your journey, but you're going to have to do it blind, especially if you haven't been taking the time to cultivate a spiritual connection. If you just consume tarot card readings for the fun and not really doing like your own work, 
You just need to really realize that you're going to be going through this blind and you're going to have to learn to how to lean on faith <laughs> and, and just trust in something that you can't see or something that you can't logistically prove, pile three. So just really, just really trusting yourself, trust, well, not trusting yourself, trusting your guides and believe in magic. <laughs> yes, the gates of triumphs. This is what's next for you. Success expands in your life. The gates of triumph are a really beautiful card. Is a really beautiful card to see and clear the air with the distant thunder. Yeah, the distant thunder speaks of trouble brewing. Things are really going to be coming your way. That's really going to be very challenging for you. But at the very least, you need to have the peace of mind to be able to face them with courage. I'm going to read uh, the Gates of Triumph, and then I'm going to read the Distant Thunder card for you. Now, the Journey by Moonlight. I'm already really clear on the Distant Thunder. Clear the air, release situations who don't empower you. And the storm is brewing. Uh-huh. Be open to change. It's all good, even if it doesn't. No. Actually, I need to read all three of these cards for you. <laughs> so I started with Distant with distant Thunder. So it says here, dramatic purification. And that also came out with Cleansing Waters about purification. And look, and even and even under, under the Distant Thunder card is the Crossing Bridges, which speaks of it's a time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. Yes, Pile 3, you definitely need to start clearing this energy out around you. So let's talk about this. Dramatic purification, renewal, and healing are occurring on many levels. Don't be concerned if there is chaos in your life. In this instance, it is good. It is shaking things up so you don't become stagnant. If your auric field or personal space is cluttered, which it is, Pile 3, it's difficult for exciting new experiences and opportunities to come into your life. It's time to clear out clutter, release the old, discarded and unused. Clear the air and release situations and people who don't empower you. Purify the dross out of your life. In order for renewal to occur, the old needs to make way for the new. On a distant horizon, the storm is brewing. Great shards of lightning and, and the great shards of lightning are thunderbolting to the earth from the heavens. It can feel chaotic, but it heralds a time of renewal. The thunderstorm clears the dust out of the air and re-energizes the earth. Be open to change. It's all good. Even if it doesn't seem like it. New energy is flooding your energy field. Examine your life and see if there's anything that needs to be cleared, renewed, or released. And, ag and again, it's time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. You get a lot about releasing and clearing and purifying. Now is the time. Renewal and even rebirth is at hand. Your message is very clear, Pile 3. Very clear. I suggest you listen and, and really absorb this message if you haven't already clicked off. Gates of Triumph. The gates of triumphs are, are waiting to open deep and wide for you. Inner and outer success is coming your way. Thriving is a state of mind. What was I talking about? Not getting out of survival mindset and making sure that you thrive. Accept that you can reach any goal you desire and even more victories will expand in your life. The more you feel it, the more love, prosperity, fame, and fortune will pour into your life. The sacred traveler wants you to know, arriving in a foreign, ham uh, in a foreign hamlet, wreaths of flower are placed around the sacred traveler's so shoulders. The townspeople are, are, are to celebrate and honor the traveler. The village elders know the challenges faced and overcome and are welcoming with open arms. If a situation knocks you over, get up and brush yourself off and discover what you have learned. You aren't a failure if you fall down, only if you stay down. So keep going and believe in yourself. This is what true success is. Acknowledge your accomplishments in life. They are more than you imagine. Victory, good fortune, and triumph are at hand. So come on. And then we're going to read Journey by Moonlight. And then that'll be your reading, Pile 3. Magic is all around you. Spiritual dimensions and mystic realms are only a thought away. The veil is thin right now between you and the realm of the fairies, elves, angels, and spirit beings. 
It's indeed a magical universe, and the key to opening the doors to these realms is to trust. Even if you can't see, trust that you are being supported, yes, in mysterious and wondrous ways. All is not as it seems. Trust your intuition and those nudges from spirit. Believe. Listen, I don't want to hear any any one of you power threes in the comments telling me that I'm not right or, oh, well, it's this and not that. Like, no, <laughs> I'm bang on on this one. You can't tell me nothing. So listen, when a traveler journeys by moonlight, mystical beings emerge and magic abounds in the depth of the enchanted forest. Even though the traveler can't see clearly, he trusts that blessings and supports are being showered over him in his life. To key to, the key to having miracles transpire in your life is to believe in magic and trust that you are supported by unseen beings in accordance with your highest good. What was I saying this whole time, Pile 3? If this reading resonated, please leave a like and a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. <laughs> if you guys want to support me as a content creator, the links to do so are in the description box. You can book a reading, donate a deck, or donate money. Any way you choose to support me is A-OK -okay with me. Thank you and be blessed. Bye. <laughs>
Like, I felt like maybe if you came to this for encouragement, what you need to hear is that Lord Ganesh is with you. Any obstacles that you're facing are going to be removed from your path. With the tear card here at the bottom, if there's sadness that you're feeling, then feel that sadness, release it from your heart, but really make sure that you know that you're really meant to be at peace because you're really watched over and that you're really protected right now. I feel like I need to read the, the fairies card because I'm trying to figure out how this uh, fits in. Fairies have delightful, whimsical, fun, and sparkly energy. They add excitement, play, and spontaneity to your life. Fairies can also be mischievous and borrow shiny items from time to time. They do this so you will notice their presence. Learn to play and have fun like the Fae. Believe in magic and miracles. They happen every day. As the sun begins to fade on a warm summer night, you may see a lightning bug or a fairy take flight. Keep looking at the world with childlike wonder. That is the spell the fairies will keep you under. Here's an affirmation. I believe in the magic of fairies. I will look at the world with childlike wonder and find ways to play. Yeah, pal four. If you've been feeling really deep and been having real heavy energies lately, been feeling kind of sad, I won't say depressed, but feeling really down and out, really pessimistic, you need to just really release that and have some fun and play. For some reason, I feel like uh, Ganesh energy will be good for that, but I'm also feeling like, what's his name? Krishna. I also feel like you might also need to really connect to Lord Krishna as well. Krishna and Ganesh. You might really need to connect to those energies. If you're of the Hindu faith or like you believe in those energies, you really need to connect to those energies. Because the thing about Krishna is Krishna knows how to have fun. Krishna knows how to like really cut loose and be a child and be a kid again. And that's the energy that you really need to like embody right now in pile three. I mean, pile four. And it could also be the energy that you're in. Really just enjoying life, having a childlike faith and wonder, and just like allowing yourself to play again. And this play is really allowing you to be at peace and is actually really allowing you to build your inner strength and resilience. Even though there is this little bit of energy of like really being sad, a little bit of sadness, you're persevering, you're overcoming it because you're allowing yourself to like really be light in your energy. So let's get some cards from a card or two from your companion oracle, which is the affirmators. So let's see what we got here from your companion oracle. Let the playfulness card comes out on the screen, but we'll see. Cool. Inspiration. There is a voice of inspiration within me. Right now is only a whisper, but the more I listen, the louder it will get. Soon it will be a flawless speech voiced by James Earl Jones through a megaphone with lots of applause. Yeah, Pile 4, you're feeling very inspired right now. Again, this very lighthearted and childlike energy can really be filling, filling you with a lot of fun ideas. And you need to act on those ideas, no matter how childish they may seem, Pile 4. It's all healing and it's all good for your energy. So really act on the, on what you're being intuitively led to do, what you're being guided to do or inspired to do. Again, the energy of the fairies can really be around you and like really filling you with childlike whimsy and wonder. There can also be the energy of Lord Ganesh as well. I, I feel it. Every time I see the strength card, I think of Ganesh. Worthiness. Worthiness. I am worthy of the ultimate happiness. I deserve and accept it. And damn it, I'm not going to feel guilty about it when I get it. Guilt is not invited to my happiness party. I won't even tell him where it is. If he asks about it, I'll be like, no, I think you're thinking of something else. And then I'll run away very quickly. Yeah, Pal 4, enjoy your life. Follow your heart. Really allow yourself to have fun, to be light, and to do the beautiful things that it is that you want to do. Um, again, I feel like this reading is very is going to be very clear and very concise, Pile 4, because I feel like you're already in really good hands. Like I really feel like you're being really watched over by Lord Ganesh. I, I, 
And if you don't really believe in that faith or if you don't really have that, then, you know, uh, we can say that the spirit of the fairies, like maybe Titania or Oberon is watching over you. But I get the strong feeling that I'm meant to say Ganesh and I, I'm really meant to like to speak him up. You're being heavily watched over right now and your energies are definitely being monitored and you're being filled with ways to raise your vibration and to allow yourself to have more fun because you deserve to have fun and to be and to have some lightness and levity in your life right now, Power Four. You deserve it. So don't be afraid to 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 listen and follow your guidance and do those childish fun things that you that you should be doing. Yeah, the four of cups. Boredom. Yes, you could be you could have been feeling very bored. And this is why you're being inspired to go out and have fun. Maybe you've been really staying to yourself. Maybe you haven't really been spending a lot of time with a lot of with people. You've just been alone a lot lately. But I really feel like you're being pushed powerful. You're being pushed to go out into the world, to have fun, let your hair down, and just be a, and just allow yourself to be a kid again. And go outside and play catch with your friends. <laughs> go jump rope or something. <laughs> you know, just have fun. Yeah, the five of swords. Things have really been really tense for you. Like I said, there's been this there's this tense underlying energy under all this beautiful energy. There's a cloud of darkness here. And it's because you've been kind of going through a lot and you've been facing, probably facing a lot alone. But now is the time for you to put that shit away. Put that stuff away, Pal 4, and go have some fun. Go enjoy your life. You're being inspired and led to do so, Pal 4. And it's very clear to me that your spirit guides just want you to, to, to just enjoy yourself. And again, Lord Ganesh is the remover of obstacles. So if things really been tense lately. I think he really wants you to take your mind off of your obstacles and the things that you've been facing so you can give him space to work. You need to, to look away for a little bit and go have some fun while he handles the big boy business. <laughs> then once you come back to the problem, you'll see that you'll, you'll be able to move through it so much easier once you lighten up your energy and go and have fun. The Queen of Pentacles and even the Moon. But the Queen of Pentacles, yeah, this could have a lot to do with your stability in your life. But right now, what the Queen of Pentacles is telling me is that you just need to be more calm, be more confident, and be more, have more faith in your independence, Power Four. You're actually in a better position than what you're believing yourself to be. You're probably just allowing your mind to raise some wonder. And it's because you've been alone so much, probably not really communicating with other people, kind of really just letting the shat let the shadow letting the shadows play tricks on you. You need to go out into the light. You need to go out outside in the sun to enjoy the summer air, to enjoy a summer night, and just allow yourself to be at peace, to have fun, and to really do something that you really are meant to do. Maybe you need to go out and like maybe listen to your intuition here with the moon. Listen to your intuition and listen to the inspiration that you're being given. Because when you do that, it's going to allow yourself to be renewed in your life and renewed in your energies, Pile 4. It's very necessary for you to get out, have fun, and to really lighten up your energy. So let's see what's next for you, Pile 4. Passion, yes. Passion. Passion is all about following, again, about following your heart and doing what it is that sets you ablaze, sets you on fire. Doing whatever it is that's going to allow you to feel fulfilled in your life. Whatever it is that makes your heart sing or whatever it is that's calling you and your energy power for. It's time for you to put your energies into things that really fill you up and that makes you happy. Let's get another card for what's next. The storm. Yes. Again, with the storm here, Power 4, things might not really clear up just yet. Like I said, you need to take your eyes off of this problem so Ganesh can heal it and do his thing. 
But whatever it is that you're going through and that you're facing, this upheaval, this conflict that's really in your life, you're going to be able to face it. You're going to be able to persevere through the storm, Pile 4. Trust, in your, trust your intuition. Trust your intuition and trust the inspiration that you're receiving from your spiritual guides, from Lord Ganesh. He's telling you that you're so much stronger than what you know. He's so much stronger than what you're giving him credit for. Allow yourself to really be guided and protected as you go through this storm. Maybe you need to like also have some more faith. But either way, Power Four, you're so you're so watched over. Like I said, this reading, you're so watched over. Like just go out and have some fun. And when you come back to the problem, you'll see that a way forward is cleared. Like honestly, this is gonna be handled for you on the energetic level, goddess. Again, with the goddess card here, this is all about divine energy. Even though I am picking up a lot of Ganesh and I really, really do feel his energy, the goddess card here is all about your feminine energy. This is letting me know that your intuition, even with the moon card here, is very powerful. You have a very strong and palpable intuition and a very strong and palpable connection to the spiritual realm power for you need to allow that connection to actually do some work for you. Your guides, the fairies, the mystical realm is trying to step in and help you help guide you through this path. Listen to the inspiration that you're getting. Listen to the downloads that you get. Listen to whatever it is that you're being told power for and really follow through on that advice. Don't give excuses like, oh, I want to go out and have fun, but I don't have money. To go and do something free. Like, Really allow yourself to dive into this energy power for because you really need to listen to your guidance. Maybe you need to listen to some music. Maybe you need to dance. Maybe you need to listen to some mantras. Whatever it is, power for you need to live. Whatever it is that you're being guided to do, you need to listen because your spirit guides are with you. They're trying to help you and they're going to see you through whatever it is that you're going through, power for You just need to give them space to work. Again, generosity. I give generously to those around me, no matter how much or how little I have. I know there's more enough to go around, and the key is to allow it to keep going around without stopping. If I stop the flow, I'm like the one person at the stadium who doesn't do the wave. So yeah, maybe going out and volunteering or giving a little bit of your time will really help you out. Either way, I think it's the energy of you having to like really be around other people. To really just go out there and maybe do something good for someone else. Maybe that'll help shift your energy. Maybe that'll help change your mind around. Whatever it is, Power Four, you need to make sure that you're that you're out and about and interacting with other people. That much is very clear to me. This isn't the time for you to be alone, to be isolated. It's time for you to go out there, make connections, and to live your best and to try to live the best life that you can with what you have. Hmm. Let's see. I'm starting to get tired, so I do need to wrap this up. I'm glad that your reading is so clear and succinct, Power Four. My spirit guys know what's up with me. No. And then there's one more that wants to come out. I'm sure of it. Perseverance. Here it is. And even joy. Perseverance says, it seems you're on a massive journey right now, and this card has arrived to remind you that you will reach the other side. The mountain you're climbing is huge and formidable, but so is your ability to climb it. You don't need to enjoy it, you just need to tackle it. Complain if it makes the job easier. Blow off steam. Do you think mountain climbers get to the top of Everest on inspirational quotes? No way. They're grunting and crying and cursing like freaking pirates. That just doesn't sell a lot of posters. Yeah, Power Four, the strength and perseverance card, you're going to make it through whatever it is that you're facing. Whatever this conflict, upheaval is, this five of swords energy, whatever it is that you're facing, you're going to make it through and you're going to make it through the side, to the other side of it, completely unscathed, but transformed and changed for the better. So really listen 
to your spiritual guidance. I can't impress this upon you enough, Pile 4. Listen to your intuition. Have fun. Relax. Allow yourself to fall into the energy of joy here, of just having fun and being light. To enjoy something, I simply need to add joy to it. It's like butter. Joy is like butter. I can put it on anything and it will make it way better. Today, I will add joy to everything. Really slather it on. Today, I am the Orville Redenbacher of joy. And life's popcorn is about to get it. Again, being in very lighthearted and fun energies, Pile 4. Very childlike energies is what's needed for you. So let's get some tarot cards on what's next. And then we'll end your reading there, Pile 4. Because this is very clear. And it's just repeating the same thing to you over and over and over again. Very clear and concise message. And I love that about my channeling. Most readers will give you a bunch of different things, but no. Here at Magus Supreme, the message is very clear, concise, and focused. The Creator, which speaks of which speaks of no, and the Knight of Swords. So with the Creator here, the Creator says that whatever it is that you want in your life is just forming. This is the storm that I'm seeing is like Mara. If you are and if you understand like the Hindu the Hindu uh faith, it's chaos, it's confusion. But underneath that chaos and confusion is Mahashiv. It's the the source, the energy, it's life. Whatever you're going through right now is is going is changing and kicking up a storm so that new things can be uh reborn and be made. I think I I don't think I read the storm card here, but the storm another card about storms was in the uh and in, in pile number three. Like I said, you might resonate with pile three, but in pile three it speaks of how storms come through, how lightning storms come through to to clear dust out the air and to revitalize the and revitalize the earth and the energies around you. And this is what I'm getting with the creator. If things are in upheaval and things are really conflictual, conflictual and like really. Yeah, again, because we even have conflict here on the Knight of Swords. If things are, if you're facing a bunch of conflict and a lot of like change and challenges right now, just know it's because it's meant to, again, like I said before, it's meant to transform you, to change and to put you into alignment, into alignment with your path. Your messages are repeating, Pile 4, I swear to God, your messages are repeating. You 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 have a very clear and succinct message, Pile 4. Really listen to this reading and really take it in. Because I'm not even, this is not even anything like too long. Trust your intuition. Whatever it is that you've been needing, been wanting to do, something childlike, something fun, do it. Listen to your inspiration. Even if it's just about like maybe just just doing more art, like maybe like finger painting or getting back into an old hobby. Maybe if you used to do music, but you put down your guitar or whatever it is that you play, maybe it's time to pick that instrument back up again and just use your, allow your spirit to express itself through this conflict. You know what it is that you got to do, Pile 4. And if you don't, then you can book a personal reading with me and we'll get down to the bottom of it. But for the most part, you know what it is that you need to do, Pile 4. You do. Like I said, I feel like you just come into this reading for a little bit of encouragement. Like I said, you guys are, are in good hands. The Magician. The Magician. Which speaks of power, action, skills. Pile 4. Pile 4. <laughs> you're so protected, you're so guided, and you're so so competent, okay? You're going to make it through this situation just fine. If you came here for encouragement, well, Paul for you got it, okay? Be encouraged. Like you're going to make you're going to make it through whatever problem it is that you're facing. Your spiritual guides are all around you. They want you to go outside, have fun, and make the most of your life right now while they work on tackling this problem and guiding you through this situation. You're going to make it through because you're worthy. You're worthy of happiness. And whatever is being kicked up and stirred in your life right now is not meant to be there. So allow that energy to be cleared and to be cleared out by your spirit guides and be excited about what's to come. 
Because what the reason why you're going through so much conflict right now is because something that you've been manifesting is coming in. And your spirit guides need to clear the way for it to come in and to settle into your life. Something old needs to be removed so that this new thing that you're manifesting and bringing in and attracting with your powerful energies can come in and get settled, Power 4. So just know that you're going through all this all this change and conflict for a reason. And you're so much stronger than what you know. You're going to make it through. You're heavily protected and guided, especially since Lord Ganesh is with you. So you're going to make it through just fine, Power 4. So if this reading resonated, please leave a like and a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, if you guys want to support me as a content creator, the links to do so are in the description box. You can book a reading, donate a deck, or even donate money if that's your twist. Any way you choose to support me is A-OK -okay with me. Thank you and be blessed. Bye now. Bye. See ya.